So hello fellow coin collectors, this is Glenn, back with some Indigrit coins. So, they're actually quite beautiful coins, they're actually nice silver coins, and they're based on the Athenian drachma system. So these uh, are not actually in the Attic standard, but uh, more like the Indian standard, so these coins are about 2-3 to three grams each. And the image actually on these coins is actually Athena uh, Alkidemos. And as you can see, if we zoom in, she is actually carrying an Agus. So this is supposed to be an Agus. Uh, let me see if the other coin... Uh, this is probably the best. This is uh, probably a monogram of the... Whoever controls the actual mint, he was actually minting these coins. So, and then we have a, a thunderbolt. So, Athena's carrying a, probably a shield, but it's uncertain what an Aegos is. So, in uh, the Iliad, um, the Aegos is carried by Athena and Zeus, but its nature is uncertain. So, they're not too sure what she's actually carrying. It has been interpreted as an animal skin or a shield sometimes bearing the head of a gorgon so that's the picturing of a gorgon on the actual shield or on the actual skin there may be a connection with the deity Aex a daughter of Helios and a nurse of Zeus or alternatively or a mistress of Zeus so either a nurse or a mistress, but Zeus probably would have, um, you know, tried to make them have babies anyway. The Aegis of Athena referred to in several places or in the Iliad. So the Iliad is actually an ancient, it's a ancient Greek text, one of the first that's pretty comprehensive, and it's about the Trojan Wars. Okay, so. It produces a sound from myriads, so myriads 10,000, roaring dragons, and was born by Athena in battle, and among them went bright-eyed Athena, holding a precious Aegis, which is ageless and immortal. A hundred tussles of pure gold hung fluttering from it. So gold was fluttering from it. So maybe that's what that is hanging down, the gold. Twite woven, each of them, and each worth a hundred oxen. Wow. So, that's quite a very expensive shield. Mm. So, anyway, let's go and have a look at the other coins. So, here is another one. This one's a bit better. So, if you're wondering what this script is, this is... um. Karoshti's legend and that was used between 4th century BCE and the 3rd century CE so about 700 years it is a daughter of the Aramaic alphabet so all the alphabets of India come from Aramaic which come from Phoenician and it was a sister alphabet to Brahmi so Brahmi is actually the ancestor of all uh, the Indian alphabets now. Uh, this one actually didn't exist after the 3rd century and left no daughter alphabets. And it just basically says, um, got it up here, Maharasa Ta Tasa Adela Datasa. So here I have the interpretation. So King, Saviour. And the king's name is this guy here, Apollodotos, so that's in Greek. And here we have the Greek legend, which pretty much says the actual same thing. And his name starts from, oh, where's the double S's? So it's the double S's. So his name starts from around here and goes down. So, he lived between 80 and 60 BCE, or that's when he actually reigned. 
And as you can see, this, this one's actually in pretty good condition. Uh, looks a bit comically. So you've got his eyes, got his hair, got a bandana around his head. And on this side, we have the same. We have the Aegis. So if you see this actually being referred to as an Aegis or a shield, it's pretty much the same thing that they're interpreting. So there's the Thunderbolt. Here's the monogram. And it looks like the X, X Roy, Roy that the Constantine used. So it's probably pretty much based on a similar thing. Then uh, not too sure what that is actually there. And as you can see, these ones actually don't have any reading, which is pretty normal for ancient coins. X X Row, whatever they call it. So. Maybe the Aegis is actually includes that whole thing there. So here's another one. Nice legend. And these are actually all a Dolo Dotus based on the how squished together this actual legend actually is. So it's pretty distinct on his coins and it's not Anywhere close to the coins of the ever Indo Greek kings. So, so this guy actually ruled in Taxila, that's around the Punjab region, and Gandhara. And uh, he went, they're not too sure if he's related to the Scythian mouse, or it was definitely most likely related to Menander, who was the father of the last Indo-Greek dynasty. So if you're wondering, uh, Punjab is actually in India. Um, that's not totally true because the largest majority in Pakistan are actually Punjabi speakers, but they're mostly Muslims and the ones in India are mostly Sikhs. So different religions, but they actually speak the same religion, um, same language but probably different regional dialects of that language. Now look at this guy. Beautiful. Nice eyes. Quite worn coin. Okay, let's have a look at the third one. Ah, this one has a different monogram. Looks like a B. Probably the good. Karoshti. Let's have a look if I can find it. So Wikipedia actually has a good article on this uh, alphabet. And I can't actually see. So this is probably a Greek letter. So it doesn't look like Karashti, no. So it's Greek. So it is Athene again. And the reason why they think it's, it's part of the Menander uh, Royal Club in that it actually has Athena. So they, they reckon that if there was actually a different royal family, they probably would have put a different god on there. Probably even an Indian type god. So, uh, okay, so his name starts from here and goes around there. Stotos, Stotos, Basilios Stotos. So, Saviour King, and that's his name. I haven't. I need to look that up just to confirm that. So if you think that that is different, then uh, please let me know. So what would you be expecting to actually pay for one of these coins? So this one is a bit off center. That's pretty normal for ancient coins. Doesn't actually add any value extra. What does add value is coins are actually on center. So on center coins for ancient coins are actually worth more than the off-center ones, and also the better image that you can get of the actual king. So slightly off-center does devalue its price. And this one, uh, it has the same inscription. So, let's have a look with I've got these in flips just to protect them and to make categorize them so I actually don't lose 
um, what I've actually got because sometimes you buy coins and just put them somewhere and then you forget that you bought them and then you get them out and go oh what is this coin I do not know and then you go oh now I have to do some research to find out what coin it is again damn damn and then you have to go through all this and you go ah oh, yes that is the coin that is the coin so all these are pretty much the same you can see the effigy is actually a bit different so no, oh, that's what I brought it for, twenty-seven dollars. But that that that's probably the low price. If you actually look on the actual coin sites, you'll probably be paying it probably at least forty to fifty dollars for one of these coins. And ones in higher grades, so these are pretty circulated. Ones that actually have a lot better detail, less circulation. So one like this. As you can see, it has better detail. It's not as circulated as this coin. So, this one, you'll be expecting to pay more money than actually this coin. So, this one, I paid $29. And I would say that's probably pretty lucky of me. Uh, I haven't found any at that price since. Probably paying more like probably up to eighty dollars for a coin like this in this condition. So they're not cheap coins to actually get. They're actually quite expensive considering their age. They're over two thousand years old. And those coins are full of history. So so they're just a pretty good piece of history. Uh, I'll leave it link down to Indo Greek coins on eBay. You'll probably find that none of them are actually any really cheap. Especially the uh, bronze coins. Bronze coins because they're square. Uh, quite collectible square coins seem to be popular with collectors. Anyway, I'd like to say thank you very much for looking at my video. And also I hope that you enjoy these ancient beauties as well as I do. Thank you very much and goodbye.